Malika, welcome to the Anoki Uncensored show. My name is Raj Gurn and I have the fabulous opportunity to chat with you today. But before we begin, I want to kind of start um, by sharing a little story with you. Um, it kind of goes back to 2010 when we met in LA. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but it was when you were promoting Hiss and um, I met you for a moment and we had the most amazingly engaging chat where we really kind of talked about your journey through your professional career, but also your beliefs about, you know, being an empowered woman and, and how difficult it is for women still today to be on that journey. Do you remember that? I do remember it very well, very, very clearly, Raj. I remember that engaging conversation, but you're absolutely right. Things haven't changed uh, regarding female empowerment. They're still the same. But yeah. I must admit there has been some progress courtesy Me Too. Progress yeah. in the sense that women are feeling more bold to complain about these issues more, to talk about these issues more openly. And, uh, and the perpetrators, the men, there is no inappropriate behavior. It's less now. It's still there, but it's less. Mm. So yeah, if absolutely. you call that, pro I think that's a progress. I think anything, even the smallest, minute, minutest um, component where a woman is made to feel good about herself and is not made to feel less than she is, um, is progress. But it's tragic that people don't understand truly how empowering it is to empower each other. And at, at the end of the day, I think that's the biggest challenge that we have, Malika. I mean, I was brought, I mean, my, my father is Sikh and my mother is Hindu, right? So I was brought up with this whole idea that women are meant to be goddesses you know, Shakti and Durga. And this is what I was brought up to believe in until I became a teenager and men started to, you know, be interested. And all of a sudden I realized they don't have the same version of what being a woman is as I, as I was brought up with. So I completely understand where you're coming from. It's a massive challenge and it's layers and, you know, thousands of years of history that we have with this. And it's unfortunate that the version of female that our culture and our community insists on putting out there is the version that isn't the one that we've been taught to be like and emulate. Like, what are your thoughts on that? It's, it's, it's such a contradiction, right? It is, but then, you know, we're born in a very patriarchal setup. India is extremely patriarchal and Raj, I think it took me a long time to, to come to, to accept this fact that actually women are the enablers of patriarchy. Yes. If, you know, they are. If, you, if I look at my family and the women in my family, uh, they are very much the enablers of this whole patriarchal culture, whatever the man says is the law and this and that so on mm. and so forth. But I mean, and India has always been contradictory. We worship the goddess and then we kill the female child in the womb. Yes. India has the highest female infanticide, you know, more so in the north of India. But I mean, it's going to take a while to change the mindsets. And I think it has to start again with women, how women are raising their children. They have to be raised with the notion of women, girls should be respected. They're, they're not just mere bodies to be conquered. It's not right. a territory you're conquering. They have to be respected. And that, it's, it, that is what's going to bring about a change. Education will really help. And I think <clears throat> if women become more and more economically independent, like I became economically independent, right. I could live life on my own terms. If I wasn't economically independent, my destiny and my life would be controlled by either my family members or the person I was married off to and, yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So economic independence for women is the key, is really the key. Absolutely. Absolutely. But let's go on to lighter topics, Raj. This yes, is so let's. It's, and let's talk it, about the movie. You, and you know what's really interesting is that there is a bit of a theme of this in the movie when we, you know, when we kind of tap into, you know, the two roles you play. So let's dive right in. I'm super excited to be chatting with you again today, this time for the film RK, RK, set to be released this May on the 14th. So yes. this is an independent film penned, directed, and acted in by the fabulous Rajat Kapoor. So yes. my first question for you is, how did this film come your way? 
You know, uh, what a great question. Thank you for asking that. I have waited so long. I'm a huge fan of Rajat Kapoor, huge fan of his, his art and his movies. And he's directed and made one of my favorite films in India, Aankho Dekhi. Yes. I don't know if you watched the film, right? I and I've always wanted to work with him. But Rajat thought I was too mainstream Bollywood. And mm-hmm. I was too, you know, I, because I had this famous... Uh, song and dance numbers that really became popular and and he thought maybe Malika wouldn't be interested in a in a serious acting role like this but anyways he was brave enough uh and he wanted to think out of the box so he, when the, he offered the part to me I just I was ecstatic you know I've been wanting to work with the man for so long and he's given me the role of a lifetime Raj it is such mm-hmm. a great part for an actor to play I play this um, 1960s actress, highly yes. tem- temperamental, high maintenance diva from the 1960s. So researching the part was, you know, how the actress, how were the Ramanji at that time? How she dressed? What kind of sari she wore? How was her hair? How what were expressions like? That was very fulfilling as an actor for me. I, I would have never gotten this opportunity in mainstream Bollywood, because that's lovely, but it's very formulaic. We know the formula. Of course, of course. So what what specifically, other than it being Rajat and someone you know that you respected as a filmmaker, did you feel that this particular role was something that you absolutely had to do? Like what was Just, it about it? Because uh, again, there is a movie being shot in the movie mm-hmm. and the director is shooting this movie. so. I'm playing two parts. I'm playing an actress today, which is our present day. And in the movie that he's shooting, I play another character called Gulabo. Yeah. Where I'm this, you know, demure, shy, loving, this kind of an actress from the 60s. So just the opportunity to play these two parts Mm -hmm. was, was very, very enticing as an actor. And the whole, the whole concept of the movie is while the director is making the movie, the main character leaves the negative, leaves the film and walks out into our real world right. and the whole struggle of how to take him back in the film. That concept was so unique. It reminded me of films like Being Malkovich and Purple Rose of Cairo. Yes, you know? yes, absolutely. So let me, let me start um, by asking you, the title of the film is quite interesting to me and I think it kind of mirrors pun intended, I think it mirrors kind of what's happening with the film, the film within the film. So RK, RK, what is your understanding of why the film is called that? I'm curious because I, (laughs) I, because I can't figure it out other than the fact that there seems to be this whole play on kind of, you know, the mirror image of yourself. You got it right. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, because the director is, again, Rajat Kapoor is playing two parts. He's playing the director, RK, and he's playing the character in the movie, you know? Right. So it's two, and, and he's, it's a double role kind of, but it's like two different people altogether. When you see the movie, I'm blown away by his, just by his acting, Raj. It is so difficult to, to just get one part right. Mm-hmm. And he did it, he, he, he plays a double role. So it's him, like you said, and his reflection, RK. Yes. Okay, so I got it. So I was right then when I when I when I figured that out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about some of the themes in the film from you know what my understanding is. So having watched the film, I want to share with you that it took me until about halfway through the film to kind of understand what was actually going on. Did you watch the film, the full film? I've watched the full film. I I have watched the trailer. No, I watched the full film because I said, if you can get me the film, I can have a really deep and meaningful conversation with Malika. Because I remember the last time you and I had a conversation, it was so insightful. It's been one of my favorites. And I wanted to be able to have that opportunity with you again. So I said, please give me the film so I can actually dive into it with her. (laughs) Thank you. So what were your thoughts on the film? So so, um, I found the film to be extremely layered. It's one of those films that... Um, You know, when you read a really good book and someone that knows how to kind of create and encapsulate all of the layers of the book on film, I feel like that's what was happening for me. Now, I don't know if this story was a novel and it was kind of adapted to screenplay because it's the feeling of this was once a novel because it was that well done with its layering. 
Absolutely right. I mean, uh, but that's the genius of Rajat Kapoor. Yes, he's a genius. It. You know, yes. he's a real genius. And 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 Raj, how many actresses get to play a part like that? Oh my gosh! I mean, I'm... it's out of the question in mainstream Bollywood, and also in terms of it was in line with my female empowerment ideas because yes. because the character Gulabo, she holds her own. Mm-hmm. You know, she's this mm-hmm. demure actress, but 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 she's empowered. Yes. She's a, she's a strong woman. Yes, absolutely. And I can't wait to dive into her because I got some thoughts that I want to share with you about her. But let me share a couple of themes that kind of jumped out at me when I was watching the film. One of the themes that I picked up on was this idea of how much of our lives and our destinies do we actually have free will over versus it being preordained or controlled outside of us. Like, what, can you shed some light on this as it pertains to the film? Um, yeah, I mean, as it, it's, a, it's a great, it's a very gr- excellent philosophical point. But I think as it pertains to the film, it's ordained for us, according to the film. Mm-hmm. We know what's going to happen with Mehboob and Gulabo in the end. There is so much of pathos, you know. Yes. You see her pining for him, so it's like just destiny taking over. But if you look at uh, if you look at uh, Neha, yeah. who's the actress, she is making her own destiny. Like yeah. I made mine, you know, when I decided to be an actress and run away from home and go against the family wishes, my very conservative father and mother. It was mm-hmm. it's it's on those lines. Yeah. Absolutely. So let me ask you this then. There's um, every now and again there was this whole idea of, you know, tarot card reading and astrology and mentions of horoscopes. Is, is, is this further to amplify this whole idea of, you know, humans not having free will? Like, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Like, is, is, this, is this kind of a way of, if you don't get it, let me put it in your face, destiny is preordained is that what was happening there with those well, I first, I, no in the movie what's happening is we all believe in astrology yeah all of us have our charts drawn out and the timings <laughs> and this and that no matter how modern and successful we become it's yes. a part of our indian heritage it's a part mm-hmm. of our indian culture so that i think that is derived from that part of the movie that part of our psyche yeah. i believe in astrology I believe in tarot cards sometimes, you know, Mm -hmm, I would mm -hmm. go to a tarot card reader just for fun, for Mm -hmm. for reassurance. And that that's what's happening in the movie. Gulabo is going to this tarot card reader that I'm pining for my lover. Will he come back to me? He's left me. Yes, (laughs) yes, yes, yes. I didn't I didn't go so deep into it. Mm -hmm, It was more, mm -hmm. I think, for me, it was more for fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you know me. I'm going to ha- I, I go there. I go there, girlfriend. You so, must. You yes, must. Yes. Because it was just that well done. You know, the yeah. movie was that well done that you can actually look at this from many different perspectives. And my perspective, I kind of went deep with it. To me, it's like it, it's like it pulled me in. It drew me in to this whole concept of, you know, the, the mirror image of humanity and, you know, which version of us actually succeeds to be the version that we decide to live because you know we god has given us options has given us choices even in you know even in those places where you feel you don't have a choice there's still a choice you always know, because you can either do or not that's a choice we live in a choice based universe yes absolutely our, our life is a reflection definitely of our choices Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Another theme that I felt was prevalent in the film was this whole idea of how much of our lives, you know, do we actually live in honesty versus, you know, in a sense of fakeness? You know, how much of our lives is lived for the purposes that fulfill our souls versus we're just kind of living out existence I felt yes. that with the two I felt that a lot with um you know the two different characters that Rajit played you know th- the one that was grappling with the reality what versus the other one that decided to see life from the perspective of the other flip side of the coin his his world was always half a cup full whereas yes. right whereas Absolutely. RK RK his cup was always half empty 
So yes. it was really interesting to see that. So what I wanted to ask you is, this is something that, you know, as humans, we grapple with a lot, right? This whole kind of idea of what is the meaning of life, you know, real versus illusion, and which version of my life am I living? And is it the version I should be living? What is your perspective on, you know, whether you felt that this was something that was quite prevalent in the roles that Rajit played? Because it Raj, really screamed to yeah. me. It's he was me. very prevalent, but I think Rajat would be able to answer that question better mm -hmm. because he played the parts. For me, I live my life very real. I don't give in to the hype. I don't live in a world of illusion because I know cinema is any which, any which way make believe. Yes. I'm not, I don't live to please people. Mm -hmm. I, I do, I, I speak my truth. I live my truth and I do, and I live by what I think is right and good for me. Uh, of course, not hurting anybody in the process. Of course. Th that's how I do it. So that way, real me is very different from Gulabo in the movie. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and I'm dying to ask you more questions about your role. But I want to ask you one thing. I read that, um, you know, in the director's notes that were given to me, that Roger doesn't really believe in rehearsing scenes before he's on set, because his style of directing is collaborating, rather yes. than in instructing. So I want to ask you, how did you prepare for your roles, knowing that the script is also very intentional? And then you're going to go into this kind of shoot environment where you haven't rehearsed with everyone. Like, how, right. how was that? How was that for you? So for this film, Raj, I think mm. what was translated uh, on screen is much better than what was on paper, what was on script. And I think the philosophical ideas of RK, mm -hmm. which were written in the script, but did not quite translate so well when you read it vis-a-vis -vis when I saw him perform and when I saw the film, they yeah. translated really well. So they right. are the film scores really. And B, I was so nervous. I was so nervous. You know, here I am from mainstream Bollywood, singing <laughs> and dancing. Suddenly I land up on a very serious set. But mm. the whole, Rajat was really nice. We had a lot of, we didn't rehearse, but we did a lot of script reading. And we did a lot of uh, reading for Gulabo scenes and I made him read my part like 200 times. <laughs> By the end, he was sick and tired. <laughs> I drove him crazy. But yeah. it's because you took it seriously. I did. This I was did. serious, right? I did. It is a role of a lifetime for me, you know. Yeah. I, so, you know, I, I took it very seriously. And that's how it was. Just a lot of readings. Plus, I loved, I loved the atmosphere on the sets. You know, the other, my other character uh, actors like Ranveer Shori, I, I've worked with him before. He's one of the finest actors in India. Right. It, just to do it, you know, the, he plays a villain, but a very classy villain. <laughs> and he speaks to Gulabo like, Kesi hai aap. Which villain talks like that? Right. <laughs> I mean, just the dialogue of the film, Raj. Absolutely. Is that one me over? Oh yeah. my God. I'm, I'm on your page. It was spectacular. It's, it's kind of like the, one of those films that you can watch half a dozen times and something new will just pop out that you didn't realize from before, right? It's one of those and films. Know, and dialogues like, Mehboob meri aankho ka kajal to nahi. <laughs> and then you say, these were from the 60s. This you know? was your line. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. And when Mehboob tells her, Aap hai, to sab kuch hai. the dialogues oh just, they were so dreamy. They, they took me back to Gurudat. Oh my God. I, era. I cannot believe era. you're saying that. I cannot yes. believe you're saying that because that was going to be the next thing I wanted to share with you is that my feeling when you played Gulabo, even in kind of the way that you played her, and just kind of the whole um, structure of the choreo choreography between you and, um, you know, the character Mehboob. of Mehboob, right? It was so beautifully like a dance orchestration that I felt like that I was watching. What was that movie? Um, Piazza. Uh, was it Piazza with no, Guru Dutt Saab? No, it was the one that Guru Dutt did with um, Vahida Rahman. It was Piazza and they did a few other ones. There was a, yeah, there was a, it was, there's Sahib a specific... Bibi, Sahib Bibi or Gulam and Not there was that Piazza. One. I don't you remember, know, there were so many of them. You know that famous scene where she is standing by a window 
you know, oh my God, it's killing me that I can't <laughs> remember okay, the name of the back. film. <laughs> but that particular film was the film that I felt I was watching when I was watching those parts of this film. It was just uncanny. Wow, thank you. That's a huge compliment. No, I, I mean it, sweetheart. I mean it. And I want to I want to dive into your role a little bit because um, I found it so fascinating and I want to tell you why. This is what I felt when I watched it. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. You played two very different roles in the film. Neha, from my perspective, was the spoiled and entitled actress. Absolutely. But it's, but it's kind of like she needed to be because women aren't considered anything. So you have yes. to kind of step it up and, and own your power. So I get yes. why she was who she was, right? Then you have Golabo, who was like the love lawn heroine, right? Her yeah. whole world revolved around the, this, this idea of love. And the yes. fact that her Mehboob was called Mehboob Yes. Further, furthered that kind of <laughs> I know, right. I know. Yeah, right? you're absolutely right. So it was, it was like a dream. Oh my gosh, it was so, it was so intentional, and that's the thing that I want people listening um, to get out of this. This film is so intentional from beginning to end that you really have to allow yourself the opportunity to go in there without a perspective and allow the film to evolve because it really is pretty magical. I mean, I was very impressed with everything. I loved your two roles. Let me let me tell you a little bit more about that. Did you first shoot, I'm curious about this. Did you first shoot like the one character from beginning to end and then the other character from beginning to end? Or did you have to keep flipping back and forth between the back two characters? Forth, that must have been hard. Forth, it was hard. Like two back different mindsets. Forth. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, we don't have the luxury of big budgets, you know, right. so there was there was a constraint. So we had to make do with what was available for us on that particular day. Mm -hmm. He was constantly back and forth. And also it was the costume change because yes. Gulabo is this quintessential 60s actress with flowers, heavy makeup, adorned with heavy saris and jewelry. Nea yeah, couldn't care less. Right. So it was right. a fact also, yes. Physically, it was, it was a struggle. But you know, like I found, I was so fascinating. I was so fascinated by the, the way that you played Galabo because there was a lot of kind of discipline and, you know, reserve in your acting. So, it, you, know, you know, oftentimes people will overplay that role and it will kind of ruin the effect of showing that she's supposed to be a certain kind of woman. And you didn't do that. You no. actually played her really, really disciplined. Like, I, I'd love to get into your mind. Like, how, how did you stay centered and focused on the fact that less is more? because that's what you did and it was done really well. Thank you, thank you. You're very good for me, Raj. Your compliments <laughs> really are giving me a boost. Thank you. It was hard because like you mm -hmm. said, less is more, but it was really hard. And that is where Rajat corrected me. And also what I watched a lot of, I watched Meena Kumari films. I watched a lot of Pakiza. Yeah. Uh, many times how restrained and controlled she was. I watched mm -hmm. a lot of Aida Rahman's movies. And they were very controlled and restrained. And that was difficult to bring that in acting because, you know, when we talk, we move, right. we have energy and I have a lot of energy. It was hard. <laughs> that was a struggle for me. But Rajat kept on telling me, tone it down. I'll beat you with a stick. Tone it down. Less, less, less. So then, it, you know, it went in. Absolutely. It went in. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was a, you got it right. It was very yeah. tough. Yeah, it seemed like it would be really, really tough. It's kind of like, you know, when you hear um, Indian singers who have such control, the, the trained ones, who have such control that every slight little movement in their voice is magical to listen to, right? Yes. I felt that when I was watching you play Galabo. Like I felt that every single movement and no movement spoke very loudly, you know, to me. And I think it's because I grew up, you know, with this being the quintessential Indian woman, right? So I think it played more into that for me. And I just remembered the film, the Guru Dutt film, Jordi Vika Chand. That one. Yeah, I've so seen it. It, and it had yeah. that feeling. It had that feeling for me. Oh my so God. So the song that, the, the song in the movie, 
Yeah. Is based is based it's an ode to Chaudhvi Kachan. Oh my god, see? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're going to fall in love with the song. It's I can't fabulous. wait. Can't yes. wait. It, it's and, just so good. And folks, just stick to the end of the show because we are absolutely going to let you guys listen to the whole song. So make sure that you don't go anywhere and you do stay till the end because we have that surprise for you. I want to ask you this, and I kind of feel like you've already answered the question, but I'm going to ask you anyway, in case anyone's <laughs> just tuning in. I am speaking to the fabulous Malika Sharawat, who I absolutely love. She's bold, she's empowered, and she's my kind of woman. So, Thank you, Raj. Absolutely, sweetheart. And with that said, which of the two characters that you play do you closely resemble and why? Like, it seems like it would be <laughs> the one, but I kind of feel the other one probably is in there too. You know, we're all complex human beings, Raj. We're constantly evolving. We're full of contradictions. So I think I have, I have a mix of both. Neha, mm. for sure, because I'm living in this and working in this very male-dominated industry. Yeah. Like you said, you really have to be strong and entitled and put your foot down to get things done. Otherwise, yeah. people take advantage of you. And, and also, I have a lot of gulabo because that is how I was raised. Mm -hmm. my, you know, my mother had so much restraint. I saw my nani, my aunts, they were like that. Mm -hmm. so so a bit of both and I have all these romantic notions and ideas we all grew up on those films <laughs> we did we did yeah oh I mean you have them every Indian woman has those romantic ideas or Mira of course Mahbub, you know so, so a bit of both I still believe that that guy's um you know gonna come and find me one day you know, I do. still, I still believe he's out there. It's like, yeah. but which is, so this is why you need, you need this kind of idea of romanticism. Otherwise life becomes jaded, Malika. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, and, and you get what you attract. I believe yeah. in that. Oh, you know? it's true for sure. Absolutely. So I don't want to give too much away um, where the plot of the movie is because folks, you got to go out there and you've got to watch this film because the punchline is right at the end. That's the yes. only thing I'm going to say to you guys. Yes. But, but what I do want to ask you is your thoughts on whether you feel that one, that the one version of a person, so this is not pr predicated on the film, but just your thought on this. Um, if one version of a person can overtake the other version of the same person. What I mean by this is we all have kind of multiple layers of who we are as humans, right? And a different, you know, a different trait of ours comes out depending on the experience we're having, right? I kind of felt that Rajit's two characters as well as um, your two characters were two kind of polar opposites of each other. I, I felt that very strongly. My, my question to you is, do you feel that, you know, we're as humans, we're on this constant battle between the different versions of who we are to see which one actually ends up winning, depending on the experiences that we've had in life and what we're looking to accomplish in life? I know it's a philosophical question, but I yeah, kind of feel you're like, right. you, yeah, yeah we, we all do, you know, we, and we, there is a constant one upmanship between these yes. various versions of ourselves. You know, we want to outdo the the out older version, yes. for sure. You're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to ask you, what is special about this film? Like, why should people, like, if they haven't gotten how excited that I was watching this film and how passionate you are about how important this film was for you, what would you say to people about why this film is special? This film is special because... Uh, it shows 60s cinema in a very modern setting. It's a very unique concept where the character of the movie leaves the film and comes, leaves the film world, the fantasy world and comes into our real world. Mm -hmm. So that for that, just for that, it's very, mm -hmm. very special. Um, this, is a, this is a very, also the, 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 the look of the film. Yes. It's very dreamy. Yes. And the film, the director has shown a lot of love and warmth for cinema in the film. Mm -hmm. People who really love cinema, they would love the film. They would fall in love with it. Absolutely. So this, and also the, the portrayal of the characters from the 60s era, you know, he's bringing back villains which were so classy before. Yes. Who, they even the villains, they were villains, but they, they had so much respect for women. 
Mm. And they talked to women with so much respect just for the dialogue. It's so romantic. When was the last time in Bollywood cinema uh, a character was called Mehbu? Right. Or an actress was called Gulabo? Right. We don't have those characters anymore. Mm-hmm. Even I, I feel there is so much of this religion that seeped into our Bollywood mm-hmm. that we, we've lost Mehbu and Gulabo. We've right. lost those characters. Way back in the past, we had a lot of Muslim characters Mm-hmm. And they had a lot of poetry in their dialogue. Not anymore. Well, this it's film... becomes so basic and so like, how do I say homogenous? Where everybody yeah. looks the same, everybody yeah. talks the same, everybody dances the same, dresses the same. Just for that, if you want variety, you go and see RKRK. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really interesting because this film for Rajat um, is an ode to Pakistani cinema from the 60s. Like I was reading that, you know, this is where his mind was when he did this. And it's interesting that, you know, you told me that the, the, the one movie that I kept seeing in my mind's eye when I was watching the scenes with you and Mahboob, right? I just kept seeing that one film. And, and, and the fact that the song that is created for this was yes. based on that. It's, it's like, an ode to that song. Oh my yeah. gosh, right? Yeah, So the longing, Raj, the love and the longing. It's yes. all there in the song. Yes, and, and, you, and, and you can feel the pain. It's interesting. You do feel the pain, but in a very different way than yeah. old cinema used to show pain because that pain was debilitating. It was like, yes. by the end of the movie, you felt like you died, right? Yes. You yes. don't get that sense here, but you still get that sense of deep love emotion. Pathos. There is a lot of pathos. Yes. And also, I mean, Rajan has made some very important, very uh, Philosophical statements like, you know, Mujhe kabhi shohrat nahi mili, Mujhe kabhi naam nahi mila. And the director mm-hmm. is saying that, Mujhe mm-hmm. kubhi awards nahi mile, kisi ne mujhe meri kadar nahi ki. Yes. That is extremely honest, come on. Yeah. How many directors would have the courage to be so honest? Powerful, it's powerful, It's so right? powerful, yeah. So people should watch this just for the love of cinema, for yeah. the romance, for the honesty. Yeah. I miss the 60s cinema, I, yes. I miss... I, I miss a Chaudhry Kachand and a Pyasa or I miss a Pakiza, you know? Oh my the God. Way, the way the romance was depicted, that was the golden period for Bollywood, for yes. our film industry. I, I think absolutely this film agree. is an ode to that. Mm-hmm. I completely agree with you. So what do you hope that audiences will get out of watching this film? Anything to add to what you just uh, said? Personally, it's really, I think it will be a very fulfilling experience for the audience. Uh, secondly, for me, it's fantastic because, you know, I'm always getting these overtly glamorous parts where mm-hmm. I sleep. I well, hello, beautiful. look at you, girlfriend. Hello. <laughs> it's you like, know, but- how do you, how is it realistic? It, it's kind of like this. You, you remember, <laughs> you, you remember Audrey Hepburn back in the yes. days, right? The most kind of glamorous and chic um, ode to beauty that existed yes. in those days and yes. she's and because of her fashion became a thing in, yes. in and and, fa- and high-end fashion designers became a thing because of her but and people were like oh my god how is she gonna play um the character of Doolittle how is that gonna happen how is she how how are we gonna unglamorize this actress to then right. build her up to be who she we see her to be Right. 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 So, but, right? so, so you, you have to understand, darling, when you're in that kind of sphere, it's very difficult to find a spot where a person's going to believe that at the end of the day, you're not what you look like, you're what you are inside. And that's yes. what comes out as an actor. Right? But, but Raj also, out. yeah, yeah, it did. But it, you have to understand, like you said, this, this role is very glamorous, but it's very layered. Yes. Whereas, I suffer parts that are very glamorous, but no layering to them. <laughs> do you yes. understand? I mean, I I'm very happy to play a glamorous character. It's very empowering as a wim- as a woman. You know, I yes. don't want to be a I don't want to be a man. I'm not competing with men. You right. Know? I'm very happy to be a woman in a mm-hmm. man's world. Very happy. Oh, Amen. But, <laughs> but the, the layers have to be there, which I really which are there with Gulabo. Vis a vis the other glamorous parts I've played, no layering at all. Look mm. pretty, dance numbers, they made me very rich and famous. 
but there has been no artistic satisfaction. I understand. I really, really do. So this is kind of, you know, coming to um, a couple of my last questions for you, Malika. What do you feel that independent filmmaking brings to the experience of cinema that perhaps commercial films don't? I feel like you've already answered this question, but let's recap on that. I think uh, independent films, when directed by directors like Raja, you know, and we have a few more independent directors, I think they're the last ones left, Raj, mm -hmm. to have really uh, uh, care and love and passion for cinema, you know. They have a story, they have a philosophy which they want to translate it on screen. What are commercial directors? With due respect to them, I'm not making any judgment. They're just saying action cut. Yeah. They're, they're following a formula and the formula works well for them. And yeah. it has made them very rich. But as artistic satisfaction, I doubt it. Every commercial director I've worked with has said to me, they want to work outside India. Do you know anybody? Can you connect us with people? And I ask them, why? You know, you you're working with big stars in India. Why yeah. do you want to work outside India? Oh, just for creative satisfaction. Right. But they are scared to, in India, to make a film like RK RK or an Aankho Dekhi because they are scared to be judged. They are scared their movies are going to not be appreciated. They're known for a certain genre, but they're all desperate. When I say that, Raj, mm -hmm. every big director I've worked with, with the exception of Mani Ratnam, has expressed interest and desire in working outside India mm -hmm. for artistic creative satisfaction. So I think the independent directors like Rajat Kapoor, and there are, of course, many other bring that creativity, that creative satisfaction that Indian cinema needs to thrive. Yes. Is it any, I mean, I'm not surprised that we, till now an Indian movie has not won any awards internationally right. because they don't get a chance in India. Right. It is so difficult. You know, we had, Rajat was so desperate to make this film. He had to, he had to do crowdfunding to make this film. Yeah. This shouldn't be the case. I agree completely. With, with great autier directors like Rajat Kapoor, this shouldn't be the case, but it is. Whereas a senseless movie with, you know, those dance numbers and nothing against them, they get millions and millions mm -hmm. with no storyline. Mm -hmm. But those senseless movies are not going to go to the Oscars or to the Cannes Film Festival, whereas an RKRK would. And that is exactly what happened. RKRK went to a film festival. Uh, an American distributor called Paul Hudson saw the movie at a festival, fell in love with it and bought it for the American audience. And now oh it's going to be released 14th of May at the Lemley Theatres. And it's going to have a limited release, but I'm glad the audience is, it's going to have a new audience. Yes, that's the point here, right? right. I mean, Iranian, Iranian cinema is recognized. It won Best Foreign Film Oscar for Separation. Mm -hmm. uh, Israeli cinema, Korean cinema, every cinema except Bollywood cinema. Why right. is that so? Well, you just said. Yeah. You just said so, why. So I think d d films like this are the heartbeat of Indian cinema. For me, yeah. this is my point of view. You yes. Know? Yes. Yeah. And it's an incredible point of view and even more reason, folks, that you got to go watch this film. If you have the opportunity to watch it in theater, we all know that there's no better experience than that, but it still has a digital release. Do you yes. know, Maleka, where people can watch it digitally? Like, where, I, where would it be? Do you know? I mean, uh, I think at the theaters, you'll have to ask Kelly. I, I don't know, Raj, I'm sorry, okay. I don't know the details, but I know there is a virtual release. They can buy the tickets online and okay. watch the movie for sure. I guess at the theaters, like Lemley Theater, it's releasing, it's releasing in Canada. Yeah. They, at the theater and they just go to the website and buy a, a ticket, a virtual ticket. Brilliant. Perfect. So to close off, my lovely lady. Raj, the... what fun talking to you. Oh, I'm oh. telling you, I could talk to you forever, sweetheart. Thank so you. as the female activist that you are, we opened up this way, we're going to close this way. Yes. What, what would you say to girls and women who grapple with this church and state idea that being a woman with an independent mind means that you don't respect your culture because being an Indian or a South Asian woman means that you should be seen and not heard? Your thoughts? I think women have to just go for it. They have to, they have to make bold decisions. That is if women are interested in living their lives on their own way, the way mm -hmm. they want to live. You know, they don't have to please anybody. They don't, 
at the same time, they don't have to hurt anybody. Right. They have to make bold decisions. They really have to, because it's in the interest of patriarchy and the patriarchal thought to keep women subdued and down. Mm -hmm. And also, Raj, I think women have to support each other. Yes. Ironically, the most problems I've had and I've been attacked so much by a certain section of the media have been women. Men have no issues with me. They love me. It's the (laughs) women who've put me down and who've really attacked me and been vicious to me and spread rumors and lies about me. I don't believe in that. I believe Mm -hmm. in the sisterhood. I believe in uplifting women and supporting women. We have to support each other, uplift each other and just Mm. go for your dreams. Absolutely. Do not let anybody brainwash you into thinking, oh, get married. And then you decide what you want to do with your husband. No, you decide before you get married what you want to do. Right. Amen to that. What needs to change in India today for there to be more equal representation between the genders? What do you feel needs to happen? Oh, my God. That's such a deep question. Isn't that a big ass question? (laughs) Oh, my God, Raj. But I think the first and foremost, like I said, for women, economic independence, because only when you're economically independent, yes, can you assert yourselves, not your dad's money, not your husband's money, not your brother's money, your money. Oh my God, I love the sound of that. Yeah, You are such a pleasure. I had such a great time chatting with you again. Thank you, Raj. Thank and you. I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to like sit here and have a girlfriend chat with just yes. a very wonderful lady and woman was, that I admire. Great time chatting with you. You asked great questions, really. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. And good luck, sweetheart. Thank good you. Good luck. Thank you, Raj. Lots of love. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye now.